meeting at 2 o'clock today. And one of the areas in my district has been going pretty much what you, you're talking about as far as break-ins, as far as uh, vandalism. Um, one of the things that they're working on, we're working on, is, is the lighting, the lighting situation. Because the area, we're talking about on Butler, I don't know if you're from the area or not. But Butler is uh, situated right next to the tracks. And along that corridor, there's an alley, and that alley gets pretty dark, especially when there's no snow on the ground. Uh, so one of the things we're looking at right now is, is the lighting situation there. Uh, number two is uh, Citizens Watch. Uh, there, that area is forming a citizen watch. Another thing I'd recommend, too, is uh, the motion lights. That's going to be a big deterrent, too. Um, now, as far as, far as your, your other question uh, related to, uh, I'm sorry, your, what was your other question again? <laughs> Think, no, that wasn't it. It was one after that. Small business. Small business. Yeah, small, okay, small business. Okay, it's important. You know, small businesses do make a community. They're kind of the foundation uh, of the business uh, community itself. Uh, one of the things I did during during my campaign is I, I did all my buying locally. Okay, usually, I mean, we get stuff in the mail, okay, from New York, from Philadelphia, from down southern Wisconsin. But I'm going to point by everything here in Superior. Same thing with our recreational basketball league. I, I, I would, you know, I used to just buy over the blue. But this year, I made it a point to buy small business here in Superior. I mean, I paid a little more, but it was worth it, okay? Because that, that was my focus on, on, on the small business. Another thing, too, me and my family, uh, lately, too, we've been, instead of running over Duluth at a restaurant, we've been trying out all the different restaurants here in Superior. So, yeah, definitely uh, small business is important for the community. And I think if we go ahead and shop there, I think we'll be, they'll do well. You, I agree, that's a problem. And uh, I'm a military guy, as I mentioned. I got out of the Army as a... Got out of the Army, uh, you know, uh, directed my troops. And I, I understand it's a, a little bit like the military, is that you have to have a well-trained, uh, well-funded, and well-staffed police department. Uh, and, and it's got to be all three of those things. And it also has to be community-driven, community-focused. And the word for it is community policing. And so people, so all of us here feel comfortable calling 911, going to the police when we need to. All of us here feel comfortable uh, engaging with police officers in our community. They get out of the car, they talk to us. They're part of us, they're part of the community. That's a huge part of it. And so the community policing, and then also being well-trained, well-funded, and well-staffed. So that's, that's paramount. That's, if we don't have a safe community, no one's going to move here. We need people to move here. We need quality people to move here because we have to increase our tax base. So that's, that definitely needs to be addressed. And let me, say, let me say, too, that the police department is great. I mean, these are all highly capable, well-trained people. That, that they, they do this. This is not a job or a career. This is a lifestyle, kind of like the military is. This is, a, this is something where they have, it's just like firefighters. I mean, that's a public service that we have. That's an asset that we have that, that it's second to none. These people are putting their lives on the line for us, and that's important. So it's a, it's a public service that we have to cherish and, and hold close. Uh, and again, I mentioned earlier that the trend is becoming, let's privatize all this stuff. Let's privatize our services. Let's privatize our utilities. Let's privatize everything. Let's pri privatize the landfill, and then we'll add more fees. Uh, my point being is that there's some services and utilities that it's not in our best interest to, to, to go down that road, we, we need, especially police and fire. I mean, these, these people, like I, I'm being a little redundant right now, but they're putting their lives on the line. So it's important we recognize that. And then the small business, end of your question, and I said this earlier too, but being strategic about how we use our tools. And also uh, calling on the experts. Uh, we have, like I said, we have UWS and their economics department and their sociology department. There, there's many, many departments that if we run into problems, we need research done, we need ideas on how to move this forward sustainably, we can go to the experts. And, you know, and I'm not going to claim to have all the answers, but what I will do is surround myself with people that do, are knowledgeable and have wisdom on the situation. So, I don't want to ramble on. So, thank you very much. Jim? to after announcing my campaign was the National Night Out. These are members of small communities, neighborhoods that get together and decide that they're going to take back their community through vigilance, 
through getting to know one another, through responsible reporting. And while I was there, uh, I uh, met, well, I didn't meet her, uh, I've known for a little while, Officer Bonnie Bessie, our community policing officer. This is an outstanding public servant. A couple uh, months later, I was at uh, a meeting on the drug problem in the city of Superior, and Bonnie Bessie was there too. This is, community policing is the way we solve this problem. I was very encouraged when we appointed, our, when the city appointed our new police chief uh, who wanted to make community policing a focus of his term as chief. I believe that every police officer needs to be a community policing officer. Focused on individual neighborhoods so that you know who your police officer is. A lot of the solutions that I want to bring are solutions that the county's been practicing for a long time. I'm on the Health and Human Services Board, so I don't believe that Solving the problem of crime is just a matter of law enforcement. Law enforcement is a vital, important partner in this process, but we also need to understand that social workers and teachers and families and neighborhoods all play a role in this. And so the city needs to still be a partner with the county and, and reach out to neighborhoods so that everybody becomes a part of this solution. I wish we had unlimited amounts of money to throw at our police departments so that we could just really clamp down on it. That's not the case. It takes everybody here, everybody in this city working together to solve this problem. And uh, finally, the small business. I've spoken to a lot of this already. Again, like, uh, like some of the other candidates said, the best way to promote small business in this community is to shop at small businesses. Buy your stuff local. When they open, visit them. That said, uh, I really believe that this is going to be the future of the 21st century economy in the city of Superior. We can't always rely on massive manufacturing. It's going to be our anchor for a long time, but small business is how you get ahead and it's how our city gets ahead. So I wanna make sure that the city is constantly directing resources and support for small business, especially in these destination areas like the many miniature downtowns that we have throughout the city in East End and South End and Billings Park. Thank you, Jim. I was told by the former chief that uh, the drug of choice in the schools is heroin. Why? Because it's the cheapest. And it just blows my mind as to why that's going on. That's why I've talked to the, the chief about uh, a task force that I want to have a citizen task force. Let's get our arms around this thing. We need to stop it before it creeps all around. The uh, Rick, the uh, railroad again. Uh, you mentioned 28 minutes you're stuck in town. Yeah. Let me tell you a story. <coughs> we, uh, Periodically, we've had police officers uh, uh, go and find them and find them. And then the next thing we know, for I think it's like $200, $300. Next thing we know, we have three pinstripe suits coming up from Fort Worth saying, why do you want to call it? money. And so we, we continue, but then we're spending a lot of resources to defend ourselves against a multi billion dollar operation with their in stripe stoop suits standing there, but we still do that. And that's probably one reason they're angry with us, because they're impeding traffic. Um, the, back to that crossing, I will be happy to endorse it with the City Council paper. But we have to be all on the same page. Um, the police department in general, I think we have a very, very solid police force, very highly trained. One of the things that I mentioned to the new chief is we need more diversity. Uh, I think that's a problem in some cities across the nation with regard to not understanding different cultures. And we don't have any diversity on the police force. We need to have that. We need to grow that. The police force uh, in every community that I know of is the most expensive operation in city operation, city government, and probably rightly so because of the, 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 the equipment, the technology, the, uh, the training, so forth. We have 70, 57 sworn in police officers. And uh, one thing that we are exploring, we tried a little bit, but it's pulled back, I'm sorry, is to have take home cars. Uh, a police squad car in a neighborhood is a great deterrent. And we're looking at moving back to that. Can I make a brief rebuttal? Sure. Uh, I just want to say I'm, I'm surprised that you were so shocked that is a problem, Mr. Mayor, because this has been a problem for years that we've been dealing with on the Health and Human Services Board. Uh, we have a foster care crisis. In An area where we're failing is the consequences that some of these criminals are facing. They don't have any consequences. They go in, they come out. They go in, they come out. They go in. We need to really crack down and say, you're not going to get away with doing this. You're going to have
have to do some kind of consequences, whether it's jail time, whether it's um, a lot of community service. I don't know what the, maybe jail isn't it. Maybe we need to develop some other kind of punishment, but the consequences are the huge lie outline factor in this, in the crime that's going on in Superior. Uh, I definitely agree with these guys that community policing does need to take place. We need to work with our police officers and we need to feel safe. We need to feel that we can trust them and we can call them and that we're going to be respected and that they're going to come and help us so that we can feel that safe. Um, I'm excited for the new police chief to start on board because I think he's got some fantastic ideas and he understands the issue. So I'm really looking forward to him serving the community and looking forward to seeing what he does with the public. Um, in regards to small business, I had my announcement speech at A Dozen Excuses Donuts because I love, I think that they're just a success story. I mean, they opened up and it's a beautiful little place. They've done exactly what they could. They make fantastic donuts. Blue Arrow Boutique is the same thing. I go and talk to those girls all the time. I absolutely, I've always dreamed of the time that I can actually go shopping in Superior for my age, and it finally happens. I love these small businesses. I live a block away from Shabby Shed. Always go in there, love to buy their stuff. It's shopping locally, but ha we need the community to invest in them, and I, the city needs to invest in them. They need to know that we're gonna be there if working with the bank so that they can get the loans and they're able to survive, um, working with the infrastructure, the buildings on these little, on the corridors like East End and South Tower, and I know that the little bakery is going in and I was just talking to her and I'm so excited. But I'm excited for these small businesses and I think that's what Superior can be is a small business town and that's gonna what's gonna be that attracts us because we're gonna have something unique not what everybody else has. <laughs>